It's guitar porn, isn't it? Yeah, it's a string through, and it's a hard tail. And hopefully it won't sound quite as whiny as strats often do. I love looking under the guard on older guitars. Sometimes there can be a nice surprise. I think someone might have left a hair there. Ooh. Bit wrong, isn't it? Ah, what did I just say? I thought a Stratocaster sounded good. Hey y'all, welcome to The Guitarist. Is that good? Was that a good accent? I don't know. Happy 4th of July anyway, if you celebrate that of course. Me being British, not so much. Don't really celebrate that here. And of course I've got to be aware that this this YouTube thing that goes everywhere, doesn't it? All over the world. Lots of people in the USA do watch, though. So as a nod to you, you know, yeah, if you celebrate 4th of July, have a good one. For me and everybody else, it gives us a brilliant opportunity to dig out my Wayne Kramer Fender Signature Stratocaster. I did that in the wrong order. It's a Fender Wayne Kramer Signature Stratocaster. Or something like that, anyway. Anyway, here it is, draped in the uh, Stars and Stripes. Look at that. So yeah, great opportunity to dig this out and uh, have a look at it, really. I've had this a while, not done anything with it. So I thought, yeah, today, let's, let's pull it out. Got a tenuous kind of link <laughs> to, the, uh, to the flag. So let's pull it out, have a close-up look, take it apart, you know, do a review, see what it sounds like and all that stuff. So that's what we're going to do. If you're in a hurry, don't forget the um, timestamps are in the description box below. So you can skip forward to whatever might be of specific interest to you, i.e. what it sounds like, what the pickups are or what the neck measurements are or whatever. If you've got a little bit of time on your hands, go and grab a drink and um, come back and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a closer look. Yeah, we'll get stuck in. So cool. Let's do it. So first off, Wayne Kramer, of course, founding member of the Motor City 5, or the MC5 as they were called, from Detroit. Um, one of the original proto-punk, I call them proto-punk really, because they were obviously forerunners of punk. Um, I think it was 1969, their first album. I think it was 1969. Anyway, I've been a fan for, for many, many, many years. Um, I wasn't around then, but I was I was familiar with their music when I grew up in the 70s. And uh, still, I'm hugely influenced by the whole Woodstock era of music. Such fantastic music around. In that time, possibly the best time ever for music. I don't think, well, I'm sure there are a lot of people that would dispute that, but I don't care what you think. <laughs> So I do. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be flippant like that. Of course I care what you think. But I think that that was a fabulous time for music, and uh, I hope that you agree. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Right, so that's Wayne Kramer. Fender Stratocaster. So this series Strat 2011, this was made in Mexico, and as you can see, it's relict. It's quite heavily relict. And obviously very closely based on his, his original. Found this on Reverb. Got it from Germany, actually. I think I paid 1,300 euros for this. Uh, a year or so ago, I think I got this. I thought it'd be nice to review on the channel. I'm not a Stratocaster fan, but I'm a massive MC5 Wayne Kramer fan. So I thought, well, it's bloody cool, isn't it? So I've got to get that. And I thought it'd be interesting too you know, to, to, to feature on the channel. Um, I'm surprised I haven't done it so far, to be honest with you. Well, I suppose I've been concentrating on new kind of affordable things, but I'm just trying to mix it up a little bit. Got some new stuff coming next week. So, you know, if you're, if you're wondering why I'm 
showing you a guitar that you couldn't possibly go and buy. <laughs> well, it's hopefully it's entertaining, you know. Got to try and mix it up, people, aren't you? Not everyone wants to go out and buy an Epiphone. Anyway, I digress. Look at the Relic job. I was really, really, I was really quite impressed with the Relic job when I got it. I didn't expect it to be this good, given that it's a, you know, a Fender Mexico. It's none of your master built stuff. It's just a Fender Mexico guitar. I don't know how much they were new, but given by what I paid for it, and, and there are a couple on Reverb now, actually, for around about £2,000, actually, I think they are. So I think I got a good deal. But based on that, I would imagine it wasn't, wasn't that expensive new. It's probably around about 1500 quid, wasn't it? Maybe a grand. I don't know. I don't know. I can't speculate. It's got this brilliant neck plate. This tool kills hate. Wayne Kramer. It's all about the guitar. It's got an older body, polyurethane finish. It's got a, a maple neck, obviously. C shape, rosewood fingerboard. Uh, Fender F style tuners, you know, which would have been like the originals. Uh, there you go, made in Mexico. Now, I was told when I got this that it had been refretted and it's got really big chunky frets on this, which are cool. I think originally it would have had quite tall, skinny ones, okay, because it's got a seven and a quarter inch radius, this fingerboard, which is the, you know, the early. Vintage style. But the, yeah, I mean, these frets are <laughs> they're massive. <laughs> they're great. Nut looks to be original. Don't really know. Can't tell you very much about that. But, um, oh yeah, it's a hardtail. This is a hardtail. Uh, I should mention, you probably noticed that when I flipped it over already. But yeah, it's a string through and it's a hardtail, um, which is... It was great actually because I actually I had been looking for a hardtail. I actually had been looking for a hardtail 70s strap because I always fancied one. I still do actually, although I'm not a strap fan, which we'll, we'll talk more about later uh, or maybe now. But when I so when I saw this, I thought, oh, it's a hardtail. That's great because you know I'm not a whammy bar user really, and and hopefully it won't sound quite as whiny as strats often do. So well, we'll find out in a bit, but yeah, hardtail. And obviously, as you can see, different pickup configuration. So Brother Wayne put a humbucker in the middle and, and I've read that he said that was so that he could be louder than um, Fred Smith when he went and did his solos. So this one here is, I believe, is a Seymour Duncan 59. And I believe the single coils here are they're, they're Fender Vintage, so I think, they, I think these are called Texas Specials. We'll, we'll take the um, scratch plate off in a minute, in fact, and we'll have a look and we'll see if there's any, any identification under there and we'll also see what's going on with the wiring. It's a five-way switch. I don't think there's anything special going on there. I couldn't find anything in the specs, so we'll, we'll see when we plug it in, see if there's any, you know, phasing, reversals, anything like that going on. And we'll find out if it works and stuff, okay? Yeah, let's take the strings off and have a, have a closer look at it under there and measure the neck and stuff. Before we do that though, let's weigh it. So it's a nice, feels like a nice chunky piece of uh, alder. I'm guessing, oh, I'm guessing, guessing around about eight pounds. Let's see. Oh, no, seven pounds, four ounces, uh -huh. or 3.29 kilograms. Nice. There you go. Let's get these off. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't serve a great purpose, sort of talking about the fretboard and fret job on this, obviously, because it's... It's not really, I suppose it's not really relevant to, 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 to many things, but it is, is guitar porn, isn't it? So 
you know, we'll we'll do some close ups so you can see. I mean, it's an attractive fingerboard. You know, it's proper rosewood. Um, 2011 Mexican Telecaster. I don't think they put rosewood on Mexican. I called it a Telecaster. Um, a Stratocaster. I don't think they put rosewood on Mexican fenders now, do they? they I think they use Palfero, whatever it's called. There's nothing going to fall off, so I can flip it over. The neck feels, it's quite shallow. Um, yeah, it's quite shallow. I think it was a 42 mil nut, it said. Let's uh, measure it. Let's measure it now and have a look at the profile. Here you go. Here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. I haven't really played this enough to say whether or not it feels comfortable or not. So perhaps in the summing up at the end, I will have done some playing and we'll, we'll talk about how it feels. I know that I just, when I picked it up earlier this morning, just to tune it up and have a strum straight away, I was doing what I normally do. I normally play, play Gibsons most of the time. And as I've said before, there's nothing in the way. I play, I lean heavily on the bridge of guitars when I play them. And you can't do that with this because you just bash your hand against the volume knob. So I straight away had to start adjusting my playing and trying to find another way to anchor myself. And that's one of my main issues with strats. I bruise my hand and I keep turning them down when I'm playing them. And I understand that all I have to do is adjust and I would probably quite quickly. But anyway. That's just my observation, and I'm sure some of you noticed that. There's on the other side. There's this, you know, great ability to hook hook your little pinky under it and do all those Jeff Beck things that Jeff Beck does. But then none of us are capable of that. So, you know, dream on. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, let, let's uh, let's take the pick guard up. And have a look underneath there, and then we'll we'll see what the pickups are, and we'll take some readings. Okay, here we go. Okie dokie. Here we go. What have I done? Ooh. So I thought I'd left a screw on then, but. It's okay, it's just a try a fit. Easy. Wow. I love looking under the guard on older guitars. You know. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know if you saw the um, the Flying V review I did a, a few weeks back. There's sometimes there can be a nice surprise. Not so on this one, but um, so I'm going to pop that down. I think someone might have left a hair there. Ooh. A bit wrong, isn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. Look the the. the Wiring looks, I mean, it didn't look like, it didn't look like it should come out of the factory like that, does it? Look, it's got a bit of a masking tape on there. I mean, I couldn't say if that's original or not. I can see that it's got 250k pots. You know, I need to learn more about this stuff because I, I should be able to identify these pots straight away, but I can't because I haven't done my research properly. I need to learn this stuff. I know you guys will tell me who made these pots. There's a code there. There's no obvious date that I can see. So back of that pickup says, obviously, pattern applied for. It just says number two wound by PS. So PS wound that. Um, 
we'll, we'll assume that that is the original spec. I'm just looking, the solder that connects the uh, the pickup cover on has been broken. So at some point that that cover's been off. Let's take some readings. We'll start with the bridge single coil, 6.77 kilo ohms, and that's um, 3.64 Henrys. Middle, middle humbucker, 7.86 kilo ohms, four Henrys, and the next single coil, 6.77 kilo ohms, 3.36 Henrys. Let's just see what readings we get in position. We'll call that position two, 3.69. And in position four, 3.72. Okay, there you go. That's the pickup readings. And as I forgot to mention while the guard was off, it's got a vintage style truss rod. So you have to take the neck off to adjust the, the truss rod. So. It, it's a bit, it's a bit fiddly that, but it's the way it was. So it's vintage correct, isn't it? So that's good. Okay, so that's it, I think, isn't it? There's nothing else we can poke around. So what we'll do now is we'll put a new set of strings on and we'll plug it in and we'll have a, have a good old play and see what it sounds like. There you go. That's what it sounds like unplugged. Today I'm using my Fender Deluxe Reverb 2, uh, which I believe is from 1986, and it's the Paul Rivera hand-wired edition of the Deluxe Reverb, the 2, or well, this one is anyway, um, which you know who Paul Rivera is. Uh, I might do a, a little extra, he's probably, <laughs> he's probably worthy of a whole film well, this amp's probably worthy of a whole film of its own. So if, if I find time, I might, I might do a little extra um, on that. Um, but for today, anyway, it's Deluxe Reverb 2. And, and I'm using the clean channel, this particular amp. This has got um, a drive channel in it as well, which is why this differs from the normal Deluxe Reverb. Uh, but we're only using the clean one today. And um, we're going into the... Um, Input one. <laughs> Here are the settings. Um, I've got this hasn't got an effects loop in this, so I can't use my little um, little black box to 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 sort the volume out. So instead, I'm using a two notes torpedo uh, captor, which gives it a minus twenty dB cut. Which with this amp at twenty two watts, I think this is again it enables me to crank this right up to ten. Okay, I've got. The sound in my head, or well, I haven't got the sound in my head because this is a Stratocaster and Stratocasters are a long way from being the sound in my head. But in terms of the amount of breakup on the amp, I'll show you. With the um, the bridge pickup cranked, it's like this. So you've got that whole... You know, sensitivity, you know, pick pick lightly and it's clean or this is the humbucker. That sounds quite dark at the moment. Mainly I think because well one of the reasons I think is because I've I've had to set the amp up with quite a lot of top rolled off really because it's so bright. It's so bright this pickup and that amp that I've kind of adjusted it so that I can mainly play on the, the bridge pickup, which is this obviously. So it's not kind of ice picky, but I think the, the humbucker might be suffering from that. And of course you can't, you can't roll the tone off of the bridge 
with this setup anyway, because these have got two tones and one volume. The tones uh, operate the neck and the middle position, not that, unfortunately. So you've got, you know, that's it. That's all you're working with there. So, just quickly go through the other positions as well. So, what's that, position two or four? I'm not sure, because I'm not really a strap player, but it's one or the other, and it sounds like this. certain quackiness to it hasn't it and again middle I've got a um, TC spark on the board let's just try give it a bit of a spark it's better isn't it Okay, position four or two. Imagine some of you could do some damage with that, couldn't you? Quite a lot of sort of options going on, I think. What we'll do is we'll we'll play some stuff and we'll try and use some of them, if not all of them. I think we'll be on 10 on the volume all the time and we'll just try and use our pick attack to uh, clean it up. Because it does work quite well with this rig. Let's have the spark booster on. Just mucking around then, and I, I wasn't finding these two pickups quite as appealing. They weren't really cutting through, so I've just adjusted my spark booster. So on the humbucker now in the middle, which was that muddy, I've now got. So I've, wake, I've waked it up. I've woken it up a bit. And 
Same for the neck, hopefully, without. Got a bit more pathness to it. Yeah, pathness. I mean, obviously, you know, these things are all only relative to the rig and the amp we're using and how that's dialed in. And I initially dialed it in for this bridge pickup so that I could do this. So I could have a nice kind of a, a, a relatively sedate. And then add a bit of. fuzz Plenty going on, I think. If you you know, if you dull your rigging properly and get your eye in, she's taking me a while to warm up to a strat anyway because I'm not used to playing them. I really have a problem with the volume knob being there in the way it really screws up my playing because I rely heavily on palm muting. I rest my hand there on the bridge always and it's just right in the way so I've got to adjust my style which isn't easy just to do it when you're just really picking up a guitar and it's a big adjustment okay because I'm doing 
I, I play like that a lot. If you if you watch me, if you've ever paid attention, you'll see that I'm like this. And I'm using that a lot. And I really I'm finding it quite difficult to say the least. But there you go. Even just doing I wanted to try and do this, but it's it involves a lot of muting. See, and that's dirty. You do knock it. Turn that down to eight. There you go. What I mean, what just happened? What just happened? I've just been editing that, and obviously there's loads of play in there. I've left loads in this week. Normally, you know, it's like, oh, we'll go through the controls, do a bit, and then we'll do a long talk about it. Well, I haven't got nothing to say, really. <laughs> Apart from, I appear to be enjoying playing a Stratocaster. I'm really, I'm really, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. well, and <laughs> we'll go further than that. Hang on, can I say this? I enjoyed what it sounded like. I, lo I thought it sounded good. I did. I thought it sounded good. Oh, dear. Yeah, well, look, that's the truth. Um, I enjoyed that, and I thought this sounded good. I thought it sounded pretty good. Okay, the knob's in the way still, you know, but I don't know. 
I, I was watching myself then and I was kind I developed a technique to just kind of hover over it a little bit. I think I was doing that. Yeah. But it was working. That was really noisy and scratchy. But yeah, I actually like this. Ah, I'd said it. I like a Fender Stratocaster. Okay, well, we've gone there, haven't we? So what I'm gonna do is the wiring incidentally, there's no way that's original. I was just looking at it when I was editing it. The it looks like it's been rewired. I don't know if these have been changed. I think that the the the, the Duncan, I think that's probably the original. But I don't know because they've got no marks on. If anyone does, please tell me. But I think what I'll do is I'll rewire it. I think I will rewire it with one volume and one tone and shift them down. So we've got volume there and tone there. Thus doing away with any knob bashing and I won't be having to moan about it anymore, will I? Yeah, so I'm gonna do that. It's all scratchy, so needs a new pot that anyway. But apart from that, I've, I've, I've enjoyed playing it. The neck felt good and you know, the sounds, we coaxed some good sounds out of it, I think today. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it. I've, um, I've had fun, I've had fun. So now what I wanted to do just quickly, as I don't do it very often, so excuse me, I'm gonna do it now. I wanna give a little plug to um, the Guitarist's TV channel, which uh, as you may or may not know is a, well, it's, it's a way to support the channel. It's a way to keep this channel free of uh, sponsorship and affiliate links and uh, all that sort of stuff. You know, I want to be completely independent. I want to be reviewing and talking about stuff that I've bought and I like. And that's really the only way I can get fired up enough to do this. I don't really want to be showing you stuff for the sake of it just to earn money. There are better things to do, I believe. But we do need to earn money. These films take a long time to make. They're, they basically means that I can't really be doing other stuff while I'm making these. So we try and get a return on this. Unfortunately, YouTube ads do not pay enough, which is why most YouTubers, to be honest with you, take you know money for reviews and they have their affiliate links and, and all that stuff going on Patreon and channel memberships and all that just to help support the channel. Well, I've hopefully found another way of doing it, which is why I launched the guitaristas.vhx.tv, which is a whole other platform, basically, which hosts all of this content, all of the films that you see on YouTube. You can also watch on the TV channel, but without any adverts in. That's the key, you see. And, um, and that's where also I put the extras and stuff. So it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like Patreon without the sense of entitlement in the, you know, it's not just a few extras and a few promises in return for your money. On the TV channel, all the content's there, there's no adverts, so straight away you're getting good value, I, I hope, for your $50 a year, okay? But you're also getting extras, and you're also getting access to the uh, members-only forum, which is somewhere where you can post pictures of your guitars and stuff, which you can't do here on YouTube. A lot of people contact me and say, I wanna send you a picture of my guitar, I can't, you know, I, we can't do it on YouTube. I don't have time, honestly. Instagram and, and email is, you know, I spend all my time making these films and answering the comments on YouTube. I can't engage with pictures anywhere else, but I can do it on the forum, okay? There's a place for it. So if, you know, it might be worth, you know, if, if you're into a little bit of banter and stuff and sharing um, stuff, knowledge, really, you know, it's a forum. You know what happens on forums, for God's sake, I don't have to explain that, do I? Well, we've got one of our own, okay? There's also the, um, what I call the player's cut. So what I do is, if I enjoy <laughs> one of my jams, like I have today, I'll put this one on there. So I'll do a cut of the full jam, the fretboard cut, the player's cut. So you can see what I'm doing, you know, just the shots that focus on where it's happening. So you can see if you want to steal any of my licks, okay? So check it out. Uh, the links are in the description box and here's the address again there now for you. It's 30 days free, okay? So go over there now, sign up. And if you don't like it, if it's not for you, just don't renew at the end of 30 days. It won't cost you a penny, okay? And I must say as well that I understand, fully understand and appreciate that a lot of you, a lot of people, 
haven't got five dollars a year to spare let alone 50 so that's absolutely fine every view here on youtube every like every click every subscription here on youtube also helps to support the channel so that's very much appreciated as well so thank you all all of you growing subscription on youtube is fantastic i absolutely speechless sometimes to be honest with you i can't believe it um it's great fun i'm really enjoying doing this and i'm going to carry on doing it so don't you know it's it's all it's all still going to happen here the same but if you want to support it go there do that and thank you i'll move on now i've done the plug and that's it for this week next week i should have all being well i've got a, a shipment from toman arriving so a lot of you will probably you might be able to guess what it is i'm pretty sure some of you will be able to guess what brand it is let's say a couple of items arriving which i shall start on for next week so until then go away and do whatever it is you have to do come back next week and find out what it's all about okay yeah hope to see you then thank you very much ta for now <music>